agencies on the walls do not have our beliefs, which they probably do, but we're not speaking for them. Not all heroes wear capes, but they damn sure do smoke cigars. I'm Travis, one of the owners of Cigars of Valor. That's all. The goal is to get the modern simpleton to believe that the police are the problem. When in reality, they're the only people that will defend you. The goal is to destroy America from within. That's why it's called divide and conquer. I'm a boomer. It's never me. It's always someone else. <laughs> I will never. <laughs> Don't ever do that again. Turn the lighter to dissolve this thing. When we're done using this, 
you're gonna forget it's on there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna dissolve this thing with this one. The PJ. Oh, what is this one? The Corojo 99 wrapper with the Corojo filler. Corojo 99. I've always wanted to try Corojo. Oh, there you go. You're gonna fucking try it. We're good. You're gonna like it. Should so we call this one square? Peace Corps. Alright. 
right, so just shrug that one. We uh, respect all branches of military. We make a joke, it's because we found it humorous. Not because oh, God damn it, we fucked the whole thing up. Let's start it over. No. We're gonna continue. You know, it would be a lot easier mm -hmm. if we had sort of a script. We tried that. Well, not a script, but like a, the, like talking points. We got them. We got talking points. Cigars, cigars, badass of the week. Cigars, cigars, bullshit, and cigars. And idiots. And idiots. Well, what can we talk about idiots? Let me. <coughs> Let me tell you something. Idiot, idiots lately have been incredible. The amount of stupidity in society is becoming overwhelmingly ridiculous. That being said, I am signing an executive order to recruit all members of the Dark Station to fight an army. Um, Okay, I haven't fully thought it out yet. I'm trying to still figure this out. We're gonna we're gonna get people from the dark station. They're gonna fight and uh, be in a militia. They're gonna pull people over and they're gonna slow down the idiocracy of society. In other words, probably create complete chaos and ruin everything and make it worse. Sounds like a sounds like a certain thing that sounds like government. Huh? Anyway. Uh, Moving on. You're gonna let me for city council. Um. Anyways, on a positive note, who's it's that? cold as fuck right now. What? Who's the guy that wears a boot and runs for president every year? You're talking about he wears a boot on his head and he doesn't just be stupid. No, yeah, fuck no. Oh, we don't like him. Here's the deal. Do you know the more outlandish and insane shit you say, the more society connects to you? Mm -hmm. Not the people of this podcast, but the general public. Um, what, uh, I, don't, I don't know, man. I don't know. We just, all right, here we go. Just, uh, did you see the cigar aficionado? Have you seen what they elected as the number one cigar for 2022? Group? No. Worst. So they elected a cigar that the American market cannot even buy. Oh, what? And they elected a cigar as number one, and it's a cigar that the American market cannot even purchase. Well, you know, everyone, uh, it's like the new trendy thing to do to hate America and to exclude it from everything. Yeah, I noticed that. Mm -hmm. Uh, they elected the H up in Cuban cigar. Oh, it's Cuban. It's Cuban. Okay. We can. So why? Um, I wonder why they didn't like every other fucking year choose some sort of Cuban or something. I don't know. And basically, what they did was they basically shit on any boutique brand that makes their shit in Central America. They can literally, literally be bought in the U.S. That's not right. Cigars of Valor, your official source <clears throat> for cigar news mm -hmm. <clears throat> and cigar industry <clears throat> stupidity. You know what's even better is that they're having the largest cigar festival down there in Havana, Cuba, mm -hmm. coming up. And there's no fucking point. There's uh, none of the U.S. reps can go there because they can't fucking sell this shit. When we have a private jet, which we're working on, 
we will jump out of it and crash it every time. We get a new one. Sure. Yeah. Any time I have to replace a tire on it, I'm just going to replace it. The whole day. Jump out. We we have absolutely decided that the private jet is going to have him smiling with his mustache and then like Cigars of Valor, a family company or something like that on it. Cigars of Valor, a family company. Yeah, so that every time we can buzz someone's house with it and they have to look at his face yeah. staring straight down at them, it would be amazing. Yeah. Uh, fantastic. So if you go put that on the wing, go put that on the top. No one will see it and we'll just flip upside down. It'd be great to have everything inside crash into the fucking ceiling and then just make sure you back over. You buckle up. Yeah. Everyone buckle up. What? <laughs> no warning at all. Yeah. And doing it at all. This is your kind of thing about what? What do you say? Mm. So, should we move into the segment? Yeah. So, today, you know, two weeks ago, we. Okay. He's trying to go ask right now. This is Fugazi. 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 Okay. Um, a few weeks ago, we introduced a new segment called Badass of the Week, where we talk about a badass that has done something badass in the history of our military law enforcement. This is going to be a good one, so don't skip this part. If you're skimming through the video, don't skip this part. Yeah, if you skip this, we're going to If you skip it. anything in Cigars of Valor, we're going to get your IP address. Yeah. Yeah, we're, we're going to. And we're going to give it to the Russians. <laughs> uh, yeah. Anyways, don't click off this video anywhere. I can see it. The guy we are talking about is Clint Emerson. Mm hmm. Which our thoughts go to him and his family because their house was affected by the tornado that hit North Texas. Oh, yes, it was. That was up in Fort Worth. Yeah, very, very mm -hmm. Wow, yeah, very unfortunate. Oh, thank you, hear though. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, he's he's a really good guy. Uh, well, at least he's okay. At least they're all him and his family. They're they're good, but still, just a loser. He had so many personal belongings that were destroyed in that tornado that, that he replaced. But just on a positive note, he has several books out. I think his, uh, the book that really, I think it was actually the number one for a while. Uh, it's called 100 Deadliest Skills. I don't remember right. Because uh, he's retired Navy SEAL, so he took all the skills he's learned throughout his uh, career in the Navy and enlightened the civilians and how to apply them. In his book. He has a three different kinds. So 100 deadly skills, 100 deadly skills, combat edition, and then there's a third one. Damn. Yeah, did, you read, did you read one of them? Yeah, fantastic. It's just the, this the small shit that you learn in those books. Mm -hmm. Awesome. If you ever catch yourself in a hairy situation, it'll mm -hmm. save your ass one day. Nice. And then he, his book is kind of a biography about himself and his career. It's called The Right Kind of Crazy. It talks about how he grew up in North Texas. And he's from Texas. Yeah! From fucking Texas! Yeah, is it? Yeah! Damn it. <laughs> yeah, he's from North Texas. I think Planet would be exact. <sighs> and so what did he do? He was a uh, Navy SEAL when he was part of SEAL Team 3, I remember it. Right, and he did some work for the NSA, and then I think he was also a member of SEAL Team 6 or Denver to the initiated. And uh, uh, the, the book, The Right Kind of Crazy, talks about a, a lot of personal accounts on his part. I don't want to spoil the book, it's just something you got to read. It's a fantastic book. It's mm -hmm. kind of about his upbringing, his, his life, his story, especially with his dad and stepdad, uh, his relationship with his stepdad, and his relationship with really good book. Um, definitely recommend it. I've read it. Uh, and I'm very pleased. It's one of those books I read over and over again. This is really good. And he just came out with a new one called The Rugged Life. Rugged Life. Yeah. Can't remember what that's about. That was Interesting. There's someone inside. I was thinking. 
point the gun at the door, and fire. About this. Uh, 
that's all been spiced, but from what I'm getting from this Coromo, like I said, it's floral and spice because the McRobin wrap, or sorry, binder and filler, and it's a really good smoke. It's unique, very interesting. I will say I've never smoked a cigar like that. Yeah. Getting updates about world events. Who <laughs> died? Um, oh, another thing, uh, Clint Emerson is a huge fan of motorcycles. Is he? Yeah, he has an Indian Challenger, they're a big fairing, badass beach wind, mm -hmm. and he also has a 1,000 like, meter bike. Really? Yeah. Wow. So he is definitely someone that uh, speaks our language. I think I'm kind of done with the crotch art scene. That's it was fun. As much as I, oh my gosh. The, <sighs> Remember the first day that we were riding? And we got up on 190. Yeah. The 600s, and that was even so. I had never had it so like that before. That was fun. It was intense. Um, and then the 1000s were just a whole nother yeah, thing. Yeah. Um, a little bit about aviation. We've had a few general aviation. Accidents lately. There's so, a lot. I, I think, a bit, well, not what I think. It's a statistic that the majority of those are pilot air. Good majority of them. The F 35 that crashed, so that was not pilot air. That was some sort of mechanical or electrical failure in the aircraft. Uh, because he touched down on the runway and then you could hear the engine spool back up and started trying to do an end up. <laughs> you know, on VTOL VR, mm -hmm. I had that happen. Where when the aircraft tries to balance itself, mm -hmm. so I can't remember what it was, but I had it turn off and then I turned it on and it spooled like I don't remember what it did. It like overcorrected and it made me crash. Yeah. So I wonder. I mean, even though that game is so fucking minuscule in real life, but um, that's interesting. Yeah. And yeah, thankfully he ejected though. Yeah. Yeah. He, ejected. he did the ground pretty good though. Yeah. He that felt good. That's Ass is probably pretty sore. And those seats, they can hold up to like 9 G's usually. Well, I mean, you hit the ground at 30 miles an hour. Yeah, it's alright. Well, maybe. I'm, I'm sure, sure he's fine. He'd rather have a sore ass and be dead. Yeah. Well, whatever. Did, uh, did they, do you know if the aircraft stopped or did it catch on fire? Or? Uh, usually, when you hit the ejection seat, it stops. It cuts everything. It cuts everything. Yeah. So I bet you it calmed down. At least they were, yeah, they at least it didn't blow up or something. You know, it only costs like, you know, as much as a city. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and then uh, we had a uh, Mooney air, really? Yeah. We had a Mooney aircraft, which for those of you that don't know what a Mooney is, uh, Mooney is a. How do you know I don't know what that is? Because why would you? Um, a Mooney is a low wing aircraft that was built in Texas back in the day. And they're fast, like really fast, awesome airplanes. Well, and they don't make any more because Mooney has gone out of business about 14,000 times, kind of like Andy Lerner's things. And, um, huh. okay. yeah. uh, the, the last thing I heard about Mooney is a French company bought them and that still didn't work, so there you go. Mm -hmm. um, no, that didn't happen to the tollway. Yeah. When they sold it to the foreigners. Mm -hmm. But yeah, go ahead. Uh, so we had a Mooney crash over in Carrollton on the Hebrew Parkway last week, or early this week, I believe. I think I remember hearing something about that. Yeah, he was coming from Abilene, going to Addison, mm -hmm. and uh, either, and they're, they're both okay, the pilots in there, they're both okay, but I'm curious to see what happened there. Uh, yeah. Being that close to the airport, uh, I wonder if it was a fuel issue or what, but. Yeah, that and that air show. Mm -hmm. It's really sad. That thing was cool. That thing looks so cool. What, the B-17? Yeah, yeah. It looks awesome. You know, there's only, I want to say, nine of them left in the world or something like that. And I think only a few of that are actually airworthy. Mm. That's sad. And it's also sad that they lost the whole crew, the whole crew of that airplane, and the pilot of that 
age 63. Very, very unfortunate for yourself. Um, you know, that uh, reminds me of like when you're driving a Mustang and the dash is like up to here and you got like the window up here mm -hmm. and the whole road, like you can't even see the road, but like three miles in front of you. Because yeah. for some reason you need to sit like under the windshield on American cars, on American muscle cars. Don't know why. But I bet you the airplane is like that. Uh, the, the, the dashboard is pretty high. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. So. But um, nothing against it. It won a war. But outdated, you know. Uh, airplanes today are like that. Well, you can't see anything below. Well, you can see it, but I just feel like the visibility. You just look out in front of you, that's about it. You can't win. Well, I mean, so how they came up, well, yeah, he was like right under him. Yeah. But I think the fighter jets have better like avionics for that sort of thing. And they can see 360 degrees around. They can basically I see the, the sphere. The computer. Oh. It usually has like collision detection and things like that. Yeah, usually they have blind spot detection. But yeah, this thing is larger. This thing is 80 years younger, you know, so. But that's a very sad story. Unfortunate. Yeah, very unfortunate. Um, There's no way to really even. You know, just shit. Oh, you can say. It's not even like anything you do about it. No, unfortunately not. But uh, just be aware when you're flying. And, uh, they came down to and NTSB and FAA said they came down to a court briefing on the ground, like altitudes and stuff like that. So they were saying they were recording this. Mm -hmm. They told them to come back and fly or something, and then they didn't really coordinate where they were at or something. Yeah. I forgot what it was. Oh, no, altitude. They didn't have differences in altitude. Mm -hmm. Like, they didn't know their limits, like where they couldn't fly and all that. Yeah, they didn't tell them, like, these 17, 300 people of you. Yeah. Well, I think they, uh, they would have the fighters fly at a different altitude, mm -hmm. and then you know, like 100 feet above them or something. Yeah, I don't know how they do it. They like stagger them. That's what I, someone said something about that. I watched the video. Mm -hmm. They were saying that they didn't, they didn't coordinate it correctly. Yeah. Uh, the ground briefing is very, very important. Okay. Um, hello, cigar. Why not? Yeah, it's um, very, like I said, a very mild. Um, You know, like the uh, the Maduros, like the heavier ones, mm -hmm. to kind of chill you out. Yeah, this is sort of like you can smoke it, you get a good, yeah, a good chill out from it, but it's not like over overdoing. It's not a punch in the throat. Yeah. yeah, it's kind of a. I would say it's 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 in that lightness like a frog. Mm hmm. I'll put on that level. Yeah. Very good cigar. And it's it's flavorful in a good way, and, mm -hmm. and it doesn't overwhelm. It doesn't just very mild. Absolutely, I agree. And uh, I think uh, I'm going to try and push this into some future shops, maybe put on the shelves. So we can make. I agree. Yes. Do uh, you, you get any feedback on the old one year? People love it. They actually they love it. it. Yes. I smoked that cigar for three hours and 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. You know, I thought like two hours in, I was like, mm. you know, I never really smoked a cigar this long. I don't know if I can really, really maintain that. I smoked that bitch another hour and 20 minutes. <laughs> Damn, that thing smoked. Yeah, it was long. perfect as he was in. He came up and was like, two and a half hours. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was funny. Yeah, I don't know. Like, dude, I kept token it, trying to get the thing down. It took, still took three hours and 20 minutes. Lots of tobacco. Yeah. Um. So what else? Uh, we uh, it was definitely an all-day cigar. Yeah, that's one that you're you're not gonna go anywhere. The next event, you should smoke a lunatic just to make everyone. I'm mad. not gonna fucking do that. <laughs> just to make everyone mad. I'll make myself mad. So Travis used to smoke lunatics for fun. Yeah, just that. And uh, yeah. if you've never seen one, they're massive and they smell like shit. And. Uh, 
God damn, like, uh, I'm talking about a big cigar. So, the reason I used to smoke those is when I was a sheriff's deputy out in West Texas. I grew up here in Dallas. So, my time off, I would come out here and visit family, friends, hang out. And since I worked night shift, um, you know, let's say I had to be at work on Friday, at Friday at 6 p.m., what I would do is I would leave Thursday mm-hmm. at 11 p.m. to avoid all the traffic in Dallas, because sometimes it takes longer to get out of Dallas than it does to actually drive out to West Texas. It's ridiculous here. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I'd leave at 11 p.m., and you know, about halfway through the journey, which is about four, four and a half hours, I would start getting tired. And what would keep me awake is I would go out and buy a JFR lunatic and I would smoke it um, during my drive because it would keep me awake and it lasted the entire drive. This one on display is clear. I don't know cares. See? Clear. Everyone knows what it's saying. It doesn't matter. Is your mic still connected? It's okay. Fine. Oh, this piece of shit. Well, I'm gonna fucking. <laughs> son of a bitch. How do you feel? Son, you of feel? son of a fucking bitch. How do you feel? Fuck. Shit. Give me that. Fucking jaws dislocated. Alright. We just have to take care of some business. Yeah, sorry about that brief interruption. We had to go take care of some shit. The dinosaur had to kill someone. Yeah. Uh, but we're back. I know y'all have been just devastated in that half a millisecond of fucking time that just passed between the last moments. And now, to you, was actually 30 days to us. So, here's the old thing. Yeah, for some reason we forget that. Yeah. Oh well. 
and we just wear the same sock over and over and over again for like three months straight. <laughs> that made it fucking disgusting. What that smells. Speaking of dirty socks, there's a company that comes to mind called Square. What do they do? They're useless. They're fucking useless, okay? Well, they're a publicly traded company, so what do they do? They're useless. It's the way it is. They're disgusting and useless and stupid. Mm. Oh, Here's the deal. That was a good lunch earlier. We had a, a lunch with a good, good friend of ours. Uh, 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 he's a police officer, a friend of ours. And one, one day we'll get him on the podcast. One day. I'm not going to disclose what agency works from. We've been up to him if you ever mentioned the podcast. But it starts with a C. Yeah. Um, yeah, he smokes cigars. He is the prime example of a badass cop. Yeah, absolutely. He is the officer that if he gives officers a good attention. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Hilarious, too. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, he's not a dickhead or anything. He's not stuck up. He's just like practical and real. It's funny. Yeah, that's why he's good at what he does. That's why he has such a good reputation with Rally like Petey and, and all the other options love him. Yeah. I like to uh, I like to joke and tell him like really stupid things. Like you know, you, you think like uh, Parks and Rec. You know, it's like all the citizens just said just really dumb stupid shit, shit all the time, and they had to sit there and endure it. That's what I do to him. So yeah, just to just to bother him because he deals with that every fucking day <laughs> in that city. Uh, like when I brought up that analogy one day at lunch, yeah. like when it was just him and I, and I said, you know, it's kind of like Bonnie. Yeah, it is. Yeah, I believe that because of that show, they put Parks and Rec on that big ass fucking trailer. Can you edit out the name? Of yeah, I know. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking about that. Yeah, so. Yeah, I brought up that analogy one day and it was just him and I eating lunch. I said, you know, this city that you work in is comparable to Pawnee from Parks and Rec. The citizens are just the dumbest fucking breed of people I've ever met in my life. That's very true. And he agreed. What does that say? Well, because you can correlate it. But it's fine. I'll figure it out. Anyways, they're fucking stupid. The citizens of that city. I don't know what is going on in that fucking city, but learn how to drive. Let me tell you something. You drive like shit. It's something in the water. Yeah. It's something in the it's, fucking water. It, it's there not is. just fucking towns. God damn it. It wasn't like this. <laughs> Fuck this again. <laughs> I'm gonna try to blank the audio in those spots just so that we can capture the moments of you. Fucking up the fucking thing. Yeah. <laughs> Do it. God! Yeah. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna add it a little section real quick. Sure. Hi. I'm cutting into the video right here because Travis fucked us! Any of the cities that live 
guess at some form uh, they are just the citizens are fucking retarded. It's well, the same thing. thing. Like everyone knows what you're talking about. I can just draw it. All right, fuck it. Okay. You're all people like are fucking stupid. <laughs> yeah, that brings us into segment three. Where is Jimmy Hoffa? I don't know. We don't really have anything coordinated with this. We just kind of talk and blabber about shit. Yeah. The only thing coordinated uh, is the effective use of the dinosaur. And the badass of the week. <laughs> yes. Yeah, the dinosaur badass of the week, and then cigars, and I take a swig of whiskey every now and again. And then we do really unnerving shit with this 357, which is unloaded, as we showed you in the beginning. I don't think anyone would even care if it's loaded. Yeah, but I just don't want to hear it. It's modern society. You're the one that I just, I just, I, I. Load it! Nobody cares. Pardon me. Talk. Well, let me tell you something. Eventually, Cigars of Valor will be an established brand in the cigar industry and in the world. This podcast will have thousands of people view. We'll have thousands of people viewing it all at once on Instagram Live. And at that moment, we won't be able to edit out shit that we say. So, um, yeah, we got to here. But yeah, you know, these are our lapels. If you had. If you participated in the event last week, by the way, no one said anything to us, probably because I released it two hours before the event, but it's not the point here. <laughs> the point is, we don't expect a whole lot from you. Yeah, the point is that nobody did. That's disgusting. You should know before we even release the video that you said better. Okay. That's boomer logic. You should know already. You should know that I was going to say that. And that. And this. And that. Shut the fuck up. So, remember that time when we tried to blow smoke from each of the cigars? Yeah. I don't want to try it. All you gotta do is get a little bit of your lungs, and then you. <laughs> like that, you know, like, and that's how you get them to come out. Like they. <laughs> what? Do it again. No. Do that again. Go on, do it again. Yeah, that makes sense. There's no fucking it. I really don't feel like having my throat burn for a fucking week. Many years ago. 
Yeah, I was like 20. 15 or something. And, uh, that was seven years ago. Shut the fuck up. Jesus. Anyways, um, like, I'm like having those memories, like the people that are like 60 and all they can ever remember is their, like, career in high school football. Yeah. And that's, so, all, that's the only thing that they've done their entire lives. But, anyways, so, Travis screamed so loud over the music, and none of that place is fucking loud, there's no way that anyone would ever yell loud enough to be able to hear it on the stage. He screamed so loud that the guy on the stage heard it, and goes, woo! It was so fucking fun. Yeah, the music stopped. <laughs> yeah. Woo! <laughs> yeah, it was the loudest scream. Yeah, I remember that. Was up there. All the bartenders went, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, it like, what? It's like 300 feet from the stage. Yeah, that was a good time. And then you had a bunch of fucking other dumbasses screaming and shit in front of me. All the dumbasses between me and the stage. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Let you know. Anyways. Oh, wait, we have to try. We have, we have more than one second of silence. Oh, oh, oh so we gotta be quiet. Ah! We need to get a noise generator that every time you hear silence, it goes, ah, yeah. <laughs> so that there's like noise that continues. Uh... The silence is too long. I think, uh, how, how long do we got? How much more? 17 minutes, 20 minutes, 10 minutes, 1 minute, 5 seconds? I can't see it. Doesn't matter. We are going to do the rest of the video recording some shorts and stupid shit so that we actually can get views on our videos because uh, nobody views it, nobody likes it, nobody gives a fuck. So uh, it's better whenever you have a forced conglomerate of views, like with YouTube shorts. Because uh, it forces people to watch our shit. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And um, I'd like to say thank you to all of our customers and stores. Get the guy. Anyways, I'd like to say thank you to everyone. And uh, we appreciate you. And uh, enjoy the stupid shit. Thank you for watching the podcast. We appreciate your support. Buy our fucking cigars. I'm your father. Your mother just never told you about me.